I would like to ask just a follow-up question to something you said. You know, you, you, you actually made a point, and which is, I think is interesting, that um, you know, people shouldn't rely on, on the results from uh, you know, the experiences in Lagos State, um, uh, Abuja FCT, uh, maybe River State and, uh, and other states uh, to make a conclusion on the results of, in 774 uh, local government areas. Um, but you're a lawyer. And, and you know the Electoral Act, you know the Constitution. Um, if, if, if there are irregularities in any part of a country, if Nigerians are disenfranchised in any part of the country, if any of the parties are involved in any actions or activities or their supporters to subvert the process, shouldn't this be looked into? No. Yeah, Tuli, can you hear me, please? No, I'm not too to Can you repeat? Can you repeat your question? Okay, I'm saying before you went on, we we lost you. You, you made a point. Uh, you said that you know uh, uh, Nigerians should not uh, rely on the experiences of voters and the reports of irregularities uh, in Lagos, uh, River State, and maybe even the FCT uh, to draw conc a conclusion on what has happened around the country or to conjecture what has happened around the country because we have 700 and 74 local government areas in Nigeria. But I'm asking um, if there are any, there's any evidence, you know, that uh, results were manipulated, um, that um, the law was broken in terms of um, disenfranchising voters and rigging, you know, in any part of the country that the election was subverted um, in any part of the country. Shouldn't that be looked into? Uh, before we went on that topic, I was uh, saying that um, we should not just use what we see in the state capitals and the local government capitals to rationalize, justify, and defend whatever the outcome of these elections are. Uh, the country is a very big one, 100 million people, 774 local government, and more than 70,000 different polling uh, all over the place. What I would just say is this. Uh, thank God, uh, even where people are unable to cover, to observe the elections and all that, you find out that this so-called citizen journalism that is now prevalent all over the place, that is everybody or most people having uh, their telephone in their hands uh, uh, that can record uh, whatever uh, things are taking place in different places and all that. And then sending that or uploading them on the social media has given us an insight into what happened in some of these so-called remote places as the uh, observers and that you and I as reporters might not have been able to get into. The bottom line, as far as I'm concerned, when you look at the report of uh, the observers, when you look at what the media may not be reported, and what the citizens generally also a player on the social media and all that, you tend to conclude that uh, this is not the best election we could have had. In fact, in my own good opinion, it could be rated as one of the most ever been constructed. In terms of the performance of INEC, in terms of uh, uh, logistics, in terms of even uh, disenfranchisement of people in certain uh, places, and like I said, if you've been doing the since 1999, what one would expect is that uh, you continue to improve uh, on uh, every four, four years or wherever, or whenever you have a election. But this is not our case. We, time, uh, we are retrogressing. And we are retrogressing not because we don't have the expertise to do it properly. We are retrogressing because the Nigerian political airline are not comfortable with the fair and fair election. Don't mind whatever political party they all belong to, whether they are in the PDP, the APC, the Labour Party, the ABC, and all that. All the Nigerian political elites, as you say, in their different areas of strength, or wherever they are dominant, where their opponents are weak, most of them one will have tried to inflame the outcome of the uh, election. So the fact you get on the region, yeah? Yes, let's just quickly look at this, uh, you know, clip where those protests by the opposition party especially in river state and when we return we'll talk some f more please stay with us Hello? Hello? 
correctly. I can hear you. We're, we're, we're taking a, we want to look at this video and then when we come back, we'll talk some more. I mean, prior to this time, I was asking about what you think of the opposition parties protesting the election and calling for the cancellation of it. Uh, the former president has also done that. We're on air now. Uh, when we come back after that video, we'll just go back. We can't hear any audio from this video you're playing. It's just visual. I want to address to you about agents of party. I place the government in this way. Jerry has been very vulnerable here. He has stood grounds defending the rights of his party. And that is the expectation from every agent of party. I really want to say this. Okay, uh, Mr. Kolawole, I don't know if you heard that since you joined us by yeah. phone, mm -hmm. um, but by way of narration, okay. yeah, that, that that is the Labour Party's um, uh, uh, yeah. agent agent at the State Coalition Center uh, in, uh, in Port Harcourt. Now, what happened was that they could not recognize the results that were read out for the final remaining uh, local government area, which it took three days. I already said that on this program already. It took three days for them to con to collate the results and send it to the uh, state the state um, uh, collation center, which is just an hour's or 30 minutes drive from where they were co supposed to be collating the results. And the chairman, or the collation officer, sorry, a certain professor, uh, was um, nowhere to be found for three days. Nobody knew his whereabouts. And he emerged last night with uh, results that was different from what they had on the result sheet to the Kolaole. Even from what we hear, our reporter tells us that even the, everyone in that hall, including the, the state coalition chairman himself, they had to laugh when they were told that uh, PDP had only 368 votes in the entire Obiakpo local government area. So now I have in my possession copies of the result sheet signed by the party agents that if you add the number of what I have, it's, it, it makes it a, a joke. And this therefore amounts to broad daylight robbery. Now, how can a, 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 a presidential election be called with such irregularities, Tunde Kolaoli? And what, you, what should Nigerians do in reaction to this? I know you're talking what, about um, the entire country. Let me start from, uh, yeah. let me start from the question uh, uh, Messi asked. Uh, with regards to the opposition party saying they were pulling out of the coalition center and also denouncing the elections and said they were not going to uh, accept it. Well, if you look at our political history as the nation and all that, boycott of elections, abandoning the coalition center to your political opponent has never had any political party or any group of people at any period in uh, uh, time. Uh, it's usually self inflicted into it, like uh, sitting oneself in the mail. It would have been better for those political parties to stay put and stay true for the coalition exercises, right from the local government or from the different polling booths to the national, um, uh, to, to, to the national police center uh, in Abuja. Because 
five, two minutes could be a long time uh, in the history of the political parties and that of the coalition of the elections uh, and what have you. And when you say put in there, we have the benefit of giving the first and uh, uh, information or testimony in court that you were there when this was being uh, done. Rather, if you were not there and then you now go to court and say you are challenging the results and all that, I mean, you are a, a question is told as whether you are there when those things were being uh, done, and then you say no, it was what you were told. Then it becomes a, a near say evidence that the court will not, um, will not uh, accept. Uh, furthermore, uh, you have asked me why even local government that are very close uh, to the coalition center, the result didn't arrive in most of those places uh, uh, on time. Well, your guess is as good as mine. Remember, I think uh, when uh, the last election that Jonathan uh, uh, participated in, that was, I think, the 2015 uh, elections, the voting exercise had been completed in River State and in Bayesa State. And order. But deliberately, the returning officers and the resident commissioners in those places were made to withhold the elections until elections from places like Kano, Kaduno, and Katsina uh, uh, came in. So that, why was it a decision? My suspicion is that, was that uh, they deliberately withheld the elections to know what those people might be returning from places like uh, Kaduna, from Sokoto and then uh, from Katina, and then uh, from Kano. And based on that, they might top up, I mean, they might uh, top up whatever result they have in Bayesa, and then whatever result they may have had in uh, River State, and then use that to kind of uh, 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 surpass whatever is return in those So There are also politics in uh, coalition exercises and all that. Sometimes they want to see and wait but to what the opponents might be bringing from their stronghold. And if the opponent brings a very strong figure from, the, from their stronghold, then they can check on whatever they already have to uh, And use that kind of to counteract or to counterbalance or to modify uh, or to, to kind of um, uh, outnumber whatever their political opponents are bringing from some of these places. The truth of the matter is that. Uh, Anybody who is a guy or making noise or who is a vouching for any of these political parties, for any of these political allies or politicians, is just wasting his time and not against, uh, against uh, the war. All of them are just, all of them are culpable. In fact, uh, in good state, uh, they just try to at least each other when it comes to this uh, uh, region of uh, in different places. In the first country, they are hearing that people are being shot. And people are being roasted alive in places like him, like uh, this uh, Kano, in the 21st century, and in very people in, the, in broad daylight. Why would we have to because of those near election voting for people and not voting for them? If it is all about party, why would we not begin to behave like I'm not, but behave like Sandy, behave like kidnappers? So, for the first of my knowledge, I don't see any difference between the Nigerian politicians and then the armed robbers and the kidnappers and bandits. And uh, the so called uh, argument that are uh, to be managing all over the country. Uh, they are all as justly and as guilty and as culpable, uh, as you might think, uh, as you might say, in my own opinion. The truth of the matter is the Nigerian people should, uh, for now, take fair way to plan a fair election and then uh, begin to plan um, uh, for the future. My gloomy young people, people who have committed by injecting more technology to some of these things, and also by a kind of thorough overhauling of the security factors of this uh, country, and also what I would call the rejigging of, of the Nigerian uh, constitution. We also have to revisit the issue of uh, the federalism. If we truly really have a, a truly federal a system uh, of government, some of these problems and challenges that we see with this election would have been minimal. It is a centralized nature of everything that we do uh, that is also partly responsible for some of these electoral fraud and challenges and uh, uh, logistic problems that we encounter uh, too many times when elections are conducted in Nigeria. Um, at this point, uh, what do you think should actually happen? Uh, the former president has called that the elections be cancelled and we have 
uh, you know, fresh elections conducted, the opposition party as well, and other well-meaning Nigerians. No, 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 no. I don't subscribe to that. That is likely to lead to anarchy. It's likely to lead to, to, to anarchy. Uh, in my book, you know, when two arm robbers are fighting, eh, uh, the Adlerk uh, uh kind of uh, submit themselves to the division of a uh, of, uh, of, uh, court. Uh, it's not uh, <laughs> allowed uh, in law. If you can't do the election, what is the guarantee that the run that you might do all the between the whole entire is going to be better than uh, the previous one that you do? I have said and I continue to repeat times without number. If you conduct an election a thousand times in Nigeria, with the structure as it is today, and with the mindset of the different politicians that we have and the different political parties and all that, the results will remain the same or even get worse uh, in order for us to avoid a breakdown of law and order, in order that we should be able to civilize people, people who obey, who submit themselves to the rule of law. I would advise the agree political parties to submit themselves to the division of uh, the court and let the better or the smarter thief prove his words before the election presidential tribunal and then the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal as the case may be. A case in which the court is calling uh, the kettle black, or in which a uh, road is uh, pointing an accusing finger to another rogue. Uh, in my humble opinion, it's not a thing I would want to, 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 to support. But if they are sure of themselves that the nations will leave and they have the details, uh, let them submit to the to the decision of the court instead of resorting to anarchy and self-help and then the run of this election. Look at the jumbo amount of money, the billions that we pump into this election. If we have put that money into the educational sector, into the health sector, into some more, into infrastructure, this country would have been better off. We could organize an election that is going to be far cheaper, that is going to be uh, smoother, that is going to be more clear and free if we are running a truly federal system of uh, government. Look at the US, for example, and Nora. The different states in the US almost have what I would call a kind of uh, uh, control and a measure of autonomy on what happens within the geographical boundaries of their different uh, states. Those are also some of the things that is lacking. We also may have to look at the issue of uh, Kola, uh, Kola state police, local government police, and then restructuring is not total overhauling of the Nigerian uh, police as it were today. The Nigerian police as it were today is the colonial police, which mentality is the gear towards preserving the, power, the government in power. Any government that is in power, the police, the PSS, the army, until their loyalty to that government in power, rather than the Nigerian people as a whole. If the security people begin to see and have the mindset that their loyalty to the control of the federal republic of Nigeria and to the Nigerian people as a whole, get some of the Manchester that will turn the different police groups and all that, wouldn't be there. And if it was there, they will arrest them. And if they don't arrest them, they will try as much as possible to minimize it because an injury to one is an injury to all of us. The policemen, the PSS, the army, they also go to the same market as where I go to. They know what inflation is all about. When Nancy shut down the investment and all that, their own children were still in school. I mean, their children were not in school. They are also at all. When they also travel from one place to the other, they now deploy to the infrastructure of the road and what happens. The regular salary is also not uh, a thing that they all get. So we are all in this together. The truth of the matter is that we must have uh, Nigeria put our heads together. This democracy is not sustainable as it is today. It is too expensive. Our allies are not prepared to let it to work. And the youth who are pushing for a change. Uh, and who are restless now, if care is not taken, if the political elites don't uh, face their masters and all that, they may push these young people to the wall, and when they push them to the wall, Kola uh, Wale. revolution might be inevitable. Kola Wale, I'd like to ask you, yes, you think please. that this, uh, the 2023 elections, especially the presidential and national assembly elections, were conducted in accordance with the Electoral Act 
of 2020 yes. was amended. And, yes, I'd like to ask you that. Do you also think that, you know, we followed latter all up until the Constitution where you talk about 25% um, uh, including the FCT? You know, I, yes, that is true. I think what the constitution says is that you must have 25%. We must be 24 local government. I'm not too sure it's compulsory for you to win. 20 from 24 states. Yeah. I'm not too sure. 25%, I think, in 24 states of uh, the federation, I think. I think that's what the, the constitution says and what I know. I'm not too sure that it is compulsory for you to win the federal uh, uh, capital. Because yeah. uh, when you look at it critically, under the law, the federal capital, which is a capital, can be defined as a, as a state as well. And uh, so if you define it as a state... But, uh, um, uh, Kala Wale, I, I'd like you to take me through that part because uh, the shadow of, uh, you know, the Constitution, part one of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999 as amended, list out what yeah. the states in Nigeria and their local government areas. However, the FCC was not mentioned as that by, you know, if you look at the literal implication or interpretation, the status of the FCC is provided for in part one of that constitution. And also if you look at part two as the federal capital territory in Abuja. So the, the, the constitution is very explicit as to whether, you know, the FCT is a state. It, it spelled out the state and local government in that part of it. And you can attest to that. It also mentioned that the FCT is like, should be treated like, but it's not a state. And you know that that's a figure of speech. You call it simile because it's in comparison. You're, you're saying it's like, but it's not. So with, based on all of this, would you say that these elections were conducted in accordance with the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and in accordance with the Electoral Act of 2022 as amended? No, no, I, I don't think so. If I talk about a substantial compliance, it was not a 100% uh, 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 compliance uh, because there is hardly any place in the world that you get under compliance when you are talking about conducting an election in the country that is as big uh, as uh, Nigeria. And then with regard to the argument about uh, Abuja and all that, I still insist that Abuja can be in a way treated as a state. The Minister of the Federal Capital Territory could be likely to itself. And you also know that it is National Assembly that makes laws for the Federal Capital. Even though they don't have their own, um, they don't have their own House of Assembly, but they have a senator representing them. And I think they also have a, a House of Rep. And I don't know whether they still have, I mean, they have a House of Rep member. But under the Constitution, it is the National Assembly that makes law for Africa. And then the Minister of the Federal Capital in the way is treated like a, like a governor. So it is still comfortable that uh, we say that Abuja should be treated as uh, maybe the capital state uh, of the tradition. And with regard to whether we require to win in Abuja or not, I don't think so. Because if you don't win in Washington, D.C., the capital of America and all that, so it doesn't mean that uh, you as a political party or as a presidential candidate uh, cannot assume a leadership in a place like America. If you be putting the law in there rather than a tweet to insist that uh, once you don't win in Africa, then uh, you cannot assume um, the office of uh, president. I also say this that uh, all the organs that they say are, except maybe governorship, maybe House of Assembly, uh, and what have you, I mean, the federal capital territory has it. They have councillors in there. They have a, a minister of the federal capital with like a governor. And then they also have what you, people you can describe as a, as a minister. And they are called um, the, the man in charge of a team for administration, for environment, for health, for all this and for all that, for security and what have you. But, 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 if, but, but if you, if you, if you look at, if you look at, I mean, I'd like to ask you, if, if you look at the, um, you know, the characteristics of the 36 states, you have also mentioned yeah. that uh, the, the National Assembly still makes, they don't have a state, I mean, assembly. So do you still say that, you know, the FCT should be treated as a state, like is a state? 
Because if you look at the, I mean, comparing the characteristics of 36 states and, you know, that of your description of the FCT, would you still say that the FCT is a state or should be treated like a state? I would rather want to keep the FCT like a, like a state. The suggestion is that uh, it will not be a weak landmark. At least uh, they have the same attorney there that we present them with the National Assembly. And the National Assembly also makes laws for them. Laws that govern only people in the federal capital. It's not applicable to even you know, or to Nakanawa, or the adjoining state, or to Chile and what are you? They also have local government structures in there. They have their own budget. They have their own budget. And all the apparatus of the state, they have them, even though they are not called the state. In fact, I have some years of faith, and I have a feeling that sooner than later, Abuja will be called the state uh, in Nigeria. Oh, so, the only so reason why they are not state, calling that's what you're the state, saying. it is not yet, but in future, it's the constitution to be amended to treat Abuja as a state. And I suspect that it will be all treated. The only reason they are not treating Abuja as a state today is not to enter the sensibilities of Southern Nigeria. Immediately, the sensibility, the key that the sensibility of Southern Nigeria is not going to be injured, and put them in the occurrence in the state of Nigeria. Oh. All right, Tunde Kolawali, um, I'm still going to go back to, <laughs> to the complaints of irregularities. Um, you have said that uh, you're not in support of um, calls for the cancellation of election. We have a situation on our hands <laughs> where um, results have been rewritten in several parts of the country. Uh, we have a situation in our hands where the uh, uh, polling, polling agents uh, for some parties were chased away by hoodlums uh, and political thugs and then uh, the uh, presiding officers and, and other INEC officials whisked away into unknown no destinations to rewrite results. We have a situation in our hands where the result sheets handed over to polling agents um, uh, contain different figures from what is being announced as the results. Now, would it be uh, apt to have a recount of all the votes, votes, polling unit by polling unit? It is uh, not impossible, but it's going to be cumbersome. Cumbersome in the sense that uh, those who were writing the different results and what have you, what is the possibility that they will not have anticipated that in certain places a recount may be ordered? And then go in there and then uh, maybe uh, mix up all these uh, uh, ballots in the, I mean, and mix them up in some equivalent to and for chemicals to have it on no, those documents not, and water. The, ba the ballot and papers. They burn them no, out. Sir, no, sir. I'm the, talking about the results. The the res no, no, no. I, I don't want, I'm talking about the results that were stamped and signed and hand it over to the party agents. That's what I'm talking about. We've seen a look at the ballot papers. Even that is what you're talking about. Yes. Even that is what you're talking about. Yes. All the polling agents in the different polling booths are supposed to be there when the ballots are being counted. And then when the ballots, I mean, when the, you are cutting the result and then you are entering the result into the... Um, yes into the uh, returning of the election result uh, sheets and what have So why a candidate to accept a different result sheet and then another one will take another different short sheet? It's my imagination. You should be aware by now, Tunde Kolawe, what is going on. I've said it repeatedly. I don't know if you're not hearing me, sir. That that, that the, the, the officials of INEC, um, from so, in some inst inst instances that we are aware of, went missing. And also, I've said in some instances that we are aware of, polling agents of some opposition parties in certain states were, were chased away, were beaten, some were kidnapped. You know, so you're saying that where was the polling agent and uh, um, why, why they should have... I'm, I'm telling you, they, they were not around. They... Some of them had them um, where were held at gunpoint, you know. Uh, so, so some of them, the, the, the polling officers, the presiding officers refused to, to, to allow them to um, see the upload. They didn't upload the results. So they were chased away. They've gone home. They have their result sheet, and it's different 
far different from if if some instances what you've been seeing uploaded online on the IRF portal is diff if you add it it will be different from what I read. you know that's what you have yeah. on the next website <laughs> if, you, yeah. if you add it it will be different from what I read. so yeah. oh, can we can we go home and say we are done with this huge amount of inconsistencies today one plus one is equal to two if one plus one now becomes yeah. three or someone takes a pen and then changes something and is uploaded and you tell Nigerians to accept that, I think you're calling for anarchy. You're calling for anarchy. Well, you should know um, that. So, they call only. so well, is it possible um, to take and say, let's look at the results of all the, the, the polling agents and count let it again? Let me come in there, please. Yes, yes. Um, if I get your question properly, you're asking me why the violence or whatever they call it uh, as not been kind of tallied. No, 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 no. Too, too little little sorry, no. <laughs> That's not what I'm asking. I'm saying that the law stipulates, okay, the Constitution, no, the Electoral Act, says that when you, when you, everybody, when you count the results at the polling unit, you're supposed to announce them for everyone to, to hear. Then you're supposed to take your form EC8A, and when you transfer the results onto the form, you stamp it. All the party agents sign. You now hand a form, one, okay, to a polling agent. Mercy, take. Okay? You take one to a polling agent. All the polling agents take another one, if, and then the second party, and then you give the last one to the police officer who is there. Now, after you do that, they can go home. Now, I'm saying that the results that the INEC returning officers or coalition officers are reading out is different from what the parties have on their own result sheet if they add it up. So don't we need to do a, re to a recount to compare and see if there's any disparity, especially at the time when what we're seeing on the, on the IREV, INEC portal in some local governments and some what, is different if you add it up from what INEC is reading out on their own website. On their own website. And can we conclude the process with such glaring irregularities today? You're a lawyer. Yeah. Thank you. What? Uh... You see, I don't know whether you remember a very man too. I do. The former deputy senate president. Yeah, God rest his soul. He made a certain revelation before he died, in which even by the time he found out was calling that uh, the very man too should be arrested and prosecuted. He said any time the different political parties are preparing for election, they usually he amass certain money for three very important uh, uh, people. Now, the who he amass money for INEC official, the who he amass money for uh, the security people, and what have you. And then I think he also said uh, the who he amass money to be used to buy uh, voters uh, in the different places and all that. So, if you have bought INEC officials and you have bought the security people uh, uh, and all that, the possibilities are that the kind of issue that you are raising now might be possible. The INEC official may have uh, uh, different election uh, sheets and result sheets for different political parties in the respective places. If after those political parties may have left, they have gone to certain corners to start rewriting those results, or those results, I mean, could even have been listed at the collection center, which is different from what was handed over to the different political parties at the different uh, polling booths uh, and what have you all over uh, uh, the country. But you see, the truth of the matter is that when you look at the number of days within which this election, um, a petition must be had from day one to day when the decision is going to be taken, when the, 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 the tribunal will announce its parties and all that, they are too very short for you to be able to prove uh, this kind of manipulation that we have been about 17,000 local and polling booths all over the country. A year will not even be enough to be able to prove that because when you are proving an uh, infraction of that nature, which is a crime, in criminal cases, you have to prove everything beyond the reasonable uh, uh, doubt. So, uh, Kola Wale, Kola Wale, today, Kola Wale, I'm trying to understand what exactly you're saying 
on national television as a legal practitioner. Are you saying that because... Um, no, 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 I'm asking. I'm asking. No, you are getting, I think that you are getting the question, sir. No, it's not a debate. This is not a debate between me and you. No, it's not a debate. No, we are asking you. what I ask, that is why I'm responding. Tunde Kola Wale, we are listening yes. to you very well, and I know that you can you you, you heard us vividly. And, uh, you heard us very well. Kind of and what I'm asking, what I'm asking, I'm, I'm, asking lawyer and I'm making that kind of comment on national TV. No, so what because I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, Kola Wale, I'm asking you one question. Are you saying that because the time will too? I mean, we're going to use hundred years, you know, to, to sort out all of this. Let's let that slide. Now, you you also mentioned right here that. Um, if you look at the other countries, the, the countries where these things actually happen, they do, I ask you if these elections were conducted in accordance with the law. And you said, no, but you know, in most cases, it's not all countries that these are conducted in orders of the law. I mean, so in the United States, for instance, you cited an example. But we're in Nigeria, we're Africa, and we're very peculiar. And we understand the power of the South, uh, you know, uh, the South, you know, to the North. And I know you know what that really means. But um, let's, I want to take you back to the Constitution, because you are a lawyer and you're familiar with the term of null and void. It's not legal. It, you, you can't respect it. it it's, it's, there's always that phrase that legal practitioners use. So I'm putting it to you again, making reference to the counting and recording and transmission of votes according to the Electoral Act, Section 60 of the Electoral Act that states that presiding officers shall, after the counting of votes at the polling unit, enter the vote scored by each candidate in the form to be prescribed by the commission. Most of that section 60 also stated of the act that the presiding officer shall transfer the results, including the total number of accredit accredited voters and the result of the uh, ballot in a manner as prescribed by the commission. Of course, the Beavers is that provision that was made. If you also look at the section uh, of the Electoral Act 148. And I ask again, where all of this you know, uh, electoral laws respected in the conduct of these elections? If you have been listening properly to what I said, I have told you that there are so many infractions and there are reasons in that become compliant with either the Constitution, the Electoral Act, and even INEC regulations. When you look at the INEC regulations, it says that bypass, shall, bypass shall be used to transmit the election results to the INEC servers in Abuja. But in most of the places where the bypass are used, in fact, the INEC chairman in Abuja, the INEC, the returning office, the national chairman of INEC, have gone to the collection center to say, look, they are challenging with the bypass and all that. And because of that, they couldn't use it to upload some of the results and all that. And then maybe after they have done the manual tabulation of the election, they might go back to the bypass and then try and then. Uh, Approve whatever they have there, uh, 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 their servers and whatever. And I would advise that you listen and listen to me properly. I have said, go and check all the decisions of all the major particular tribunals in Nigeria. They have always relied on what you call a kind of social compliance, social compliance with the constitution, with the electoral act, with the INEC regulations. There has never been any decisions in all the major particular tribunals. Where it has been said that there was a hundred percent compliance with both the constitution, the electoral act, and then the INEC regulations. And I'm not even sure that if you go to a country like the US, you will have to such a compliance with uh, the electoral act, with the constitution, and also the regulations and other. We have seen a situation in a place like London, for example, in England, in which some people went and snatched ballot boxes. It's not peculiar to Nigeria, no, in London, in, in the city of London. Some young people were, and some time ago, went and smashed ballot, ballot boxes, smashed it and threw out the content, making it difficult for the, I, I, the also called INEC official to, to conduct uh, proper uh, elections and have the uh, effective uh, polling book. There is nowhere in the world you have 100% compliance with the constitution, with the electoral, and then with whatever the election, the electoral body must set up for itself. Our problem is even more peculiar. In the sense that most of the things that we use for this election were not within our control. Take, for example, the Viva. The Viva, I'm sure, was not manufactured in Nigeria. 
the fibers I'm sure was not configured by Nigeria. The fibers I'm sure Nigerian engineers might not even know the intricacies of how to even repair or manage or to operate those things properly. Look at the fibers. They say some of the uh, hydro officials who were supposed to upload those results and transmit to their servers in Abuja, it was their own pocket, their own pictures that they were sending to the, to, 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 to the servers in Abuja because they didn't even know how to operate the fibers. Maybe they never got enough time to teach any or not to use the driver. And technology is meant to serve man and not man to serve I'd like to understand and you let very me clearly. Mind, let me tell you, law is the property of what the court is say, and nothing more but the property of what the court is say. I'd like to understand what you're saying. Maybe I, I, I'm not getting you. So are you saying that because in the world and other parts, I mean, the United States you have mentioned, that um, there's no compliance. You, we, we're not guaranteed of full compliance with the law. That you know, you should also be uh, a norm. It should be accepted. Uh, with the fact that there's been several irregularities, with several evidence to prove, you have also attested to that. Are you saying that because uh, it's a norm in other parts of the world that you know we should just you know let that slide? That it should also be accepted. I mean, it's what happens everywhere. So it should be accepted. Is that what you're saying? I never said so. Okay. What I've only said that, uh, and I will take it back to 2019, when uh, the PDP, I think, also went to court and all that. And then they were asked to bring some of those uh, ballot papers and the uh, uh, election sheet results and all that. And they took it to the tribunal. You saw the mountain of a document that was uh, that was dumped on the tribunal, and uh, in the case was joking and asking uh, how many months or how many years or how many days it would take the the old men who were sitting at those electoral petition tribunal to pass through or to shift through the mountain of document that has now been dumped on them. This is what the matter is that and take it uh, for me that. It's really very difficult, especially in an election of this magnitude, to prove, to prove, because you must prove that any police put that you are led that there has been mapacity, you must prove that in that police put there was mapacity. And you have about 33,000, more than 33,000 police boots in Nigeria. So if you are going to take it in about 33,000 police boots in Nigeria, send your hands and local government. Will you be able to prove within the precise number of days that the electoral process has been more The answer is no. And if you say you just want to do a random proof, a uh, proof that it happened in, um, in Lagos, proof that it happened in Portaco, proof that it happened in Kano, what the petition, what the electoral process has now will do is cancel the elections in those places you have been able to prove a minus of the results of the person who benefited from it. And if the man still has more votes than the person, who was able to prove that there has been a rigging from my parties and all that? The man who did the rigging and from whose who's, um, uh, votes have been deducted will still remain the winner at the end of the day. That is what we have seen in Osu State uh, recently. Somebody was said to have won the governorship election. Somebody said, Look, I won the majority of the law who vote. And the election petitioner, I mean, the, the, the judges in there, looked through the results and all that, and deducted where they were able to prove that there has been over voting. And then the law was able to prove at the end of the day, became the winner of the election. For God's sake, proving the election of practices in about 70,000, more than 70,000 polling booths, 774 local governments in Nigeria, is a very, very uphill task. I'm not saying they should not attempt it. They should, I have said, I advocate a uh, rule of law that people should approach the court and ventilate their anger. We should not embark on what we call FF or allow law and order to take time because of this uh, election. And uh, like I said again, most of the political parties are guilty as the other party. Uh, I'm not sure any of them, their hands are clean. All of them have participated in one my party since uh, uh, the other, especially the three leading political parties. Okay, today, thank you so much. Um, some people have. Uh are playing the ethnic card, um, saying that um, uh, now is a time for uh, 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 Nigerians from the Southwest to come together and support their own. 
um, and um, you know, saying that uh, it's it's going to be for the benefit of the Southwest. Do you think that um, you know, well-meaning Nigerians, you know, especially those in the, of the political class, you know, um, should 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 play the ethnic card and um, if they notice anything that uh, needs to be called out, look the other way for the sake of um, ethnicity, you know, saying that okay, Yoruba uh, candidate has been elected. Let's let's come together and speak in one voice. Or do you think that um, yeah, people should say, okay, uh, I'm from the same part of the country as a declared winner, but I'll I'll speak truth, you know, if I see anything that needs to be called out. Well, I believe in equity. Uh, I believe in equity. I believe that what is good for the Fulani man, what is good for the Hausa man, what is good for the Yoruba man, is equally good for the PPO man, is good for the Ibo man, is good for the Ibira man, and what are those? So we must also remember that there are more than 250 tribes in Nigeria. In fact, some people are saying we have about, there are about 250 tribes in Nigeria. So, but somehow, the Hausa man, the Fulani man, the Yoruba man, and the Ibo man, have been able to allocate for themselves some kind of superiority and tend to believe that other ethnic groups that don't matter in this country, that it is either them or nobody else. And I disagree with them. With them. If you have a tribe that is not more than 10,000 in Nigeria, they are on the same footing and you call it entitled to what the Nigeria Federation is able to, and to provide, just like the Hansa man, just like the Hippo man, just like the Fulani man, and uh, what have it. No tribe whether because of the numerical scale is superior or bigger or more, more important uh, uh, than the other. That is the one. The second issue is I'm not uh, one of those who subscribe to this tribal uh, issue that uh, we must be rotating this thing on the basis of the tribe or we must be rotating on the basis of a religion and war as you. Elbert and Joe was the president for eight years and war as What is this special that uh, the value can be said about the job? So that I was questioned here or there about what is it that the, the bias has been benefited uh, from Jonathan and other uh, tribes in Nigeria didn't benefit. Buhari has been president now for more than for about eight years. What is it peculiar that the Katina people benefited? Or insecurity in Katina than people uh, in many of these uh, other places and other. We should be looking for the best men and women among us to lead this country to prosperity, to economic emancipation to equality of all types in which you are not going to have a discrimination. And for course, let me remember, this is the 21st century. Not too long ago, a Yoruba lady contested to become the Prime Minister of Britain. And I think she came fourth or third. So if a Yoruba woman is contested to be the Prime Minister of Britain, and then you also go to America, there are Igbo, there are Yoruba in the Congress. Obama is uh, from Kenya. You go to Spain, there are Nigerians, there are Igbo who are in parliament in Spain and know that. We can revise this as it is happening in those places if you also begin to happen among us. So let us emphasize this issue of religion. Let us emphasize the issue of a tribe. It is the best brain and the best men among us that we must give the best job that is available in the land. It's not a job, the job of the president of the governor of the council and know that. It shouldn't be based on tribalism or whatever religion that you, you, you belong to. In fact, in my own opinion, you know, the so-called Christian and the so-called Muslim are about the most, the worst species of woman in that to combine. The Ogun worshiper does not cheat people because we know that if he cheats people, Ogun will track him. The man who worships Ogun does not say the cheat other people because we know that if he cheats other people, the thunder will strike him. But when you look at the average Muslim, you look at the average Christian, they have Bible in hand, they have the Quran in hand, and then they commit the most of the, the most of the most and you not crime as you can find the, uh, all over this place. So I am not for tribe, I'm not for religion, I'm not for the most uh, educated, the most disabled, the most articulate, the most adjust, the most uh, uh, charismatic, and the party who has the wishes, who has the fear of God and the I mean, uh, of uh, whatever you worship, and the man who really is ready. So deliver the video of democracy to all Nigeria, no matter what their tribe or religion be. Those are the people who should be converting uh, our vote for and nothing else.